credentials come uh, as a party, but from the courtesy of Papua New Guinea, because my government did not include any opposition members of parliament on the delegation. So uh, that's the least of the things about the Canadian government that have been embarrassing at it, ever since, really, since uh, COP12 and the period right after COP11 when uh, our government changed and our climate position changed 180 degrees. We went from being a country that wanted to achieve uh, globally binding reductions of greenhouse gases through the Kyoto Protocol and to make it work. Uh, now, admittedly, with a, a lack of ambition in making sure that we actually reduced our emissions, but we had a climate plan in place in 2005, and not to revisit all the things that have gone wrong in Canada, just to say that the performance in Durban is part of a piece in terms of uh, the betrayal of climate commitments that were made when the Canadian Parliament ratified the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, we have had the shadow of something, and, and uh, Herman was just mentioning to me information that he had, the shadow of the specter of Canada actually moving to legally withdraw from Kyoto. Uh, that has been uh, reported in the Canadian media as uh, an intention on the part of the Harper government to announce it on December 23rd, when our house is no longer in session, and when we are all uh, home from Durban. And it's clearly something that I regard as uh, the most egregious thing yet. I hope it doesn't come to pass, but it clearly has been a decision. So if it doesn't happen, it will be because the decision, because pressure here led them to reverse. Uh, there have been efforts made by the environment minister who leads our delegation here to tell other delegations and other people that they won't pull out, but when you press him, it's basically he won't pull out this week. The intention is not to have uh, Canada announcing legal withdrawal from Kyoto during COP17. Um, I've heard some people suggest that given how badly Canada has performed and how negative and obstructionist our delegation has been in meeting after meeting, that perhaps it will be easier to make progress if Canada isn't in the room. But as a Canadian who uh, has been part of the process and who wants our government and our country to be reflected around the world in accordance with the aspirations of the majority of Canadians. I, I do want to make it clear to people who are wondering what happened to Canada that 80% uh, of Canadians want climate action. The majority of Canadians want to see Kyoto in a second period to support the Kyoto Protocol. And we have a very bizarre um, electoral system that allows 39% of those who voted to elect a majority government. And so for those of you who wonder if, if Canadians have lost perspective and no longer care about climate, it, uh, ice caps are, you know, the, the polar ice that's melting, and my colleague John Stryker, who has been a candidate for the Greens of the Yukon and is a president of the Green Party of Canada, is also an Arctic scientist, and he can tell you chapter and verse how much we're losing our winter ice and, and our summer ice, and at what point we won't see, we'll have open water on the North Pole, and we're losing glaciers, they're retreating rapidly, we're losing our permafrost, we're seeing increased floods, increased droughts. We are, we are quite vulnerable to the climate crisis. We, are, we have a, an enormous coastline. We're seeing storm surges, and loss of property all along our, our coastal zones, and extreme weather events that have been, you know, that, that have cost billions of dollars. Now we're much, as a wealthy country, we're not nearly as, as uh, ruined by a severe weather event, an climate event as, as poorer nations, but we are quite exposed. And we have a government that is blind to the threat, literally blind to the threat. And as a Canadian, I, I'm proud of my country and I'm proud of the, of the fact that the Canadian public so overwhelmingly wants climate action. And I deeply grieve the fact that we're currently represented by a government that doesn't even begin to understand that this is an issue. They're just obsessed with the growth of tar sands and exports from the tar sands. And that essentially explains all government policy coming out of Canada. It might as well be made in the corporate boardroom of an oil company.